Hello, my name's Tom Otley from Business Traveller and here we are at Heathrow Terminal 3 ready to fly on Etihad's new A350-1000 aircraft from London to Abu Dhabi. It's an exciting flight because this isn't actually a scheduled flight, it's just so that we can experience the business class on this night flight over to Abu Dhabi. So here we are on board. Um, the business class uh, cabin here is 44 business suites in a one-to-one -one configuration. I'm here in 12A, which is a window seat. There are middle seats where there's a divide, so if you're with a couple, those are the ones to go for. So these window seats give you the most privacy, uh, gives you the chance to look out the window as well. Not much of a view here, but once we take off and also landing into Abu Dhabi. Um, and there's loads and loads of room in these seats. These seats are the same as the Rockwell Collins seats you'll see on the British Airways uh, new fleet. There are some differences in the seat. Um, there's a lot of similarities, the sliding door, um, the storage spaces are slightly different and also the feel of the, the cabin is different from the British Airways one. But both of them are very, very comfortable business class seats and a new generation. You've also got the new aircraft which is the A350-1000. Um, it's a big aircraft, it's brand new and Etihad says it's about 50% quieter than the previous generation of aircraft which will make a difference when you're trying to sleep or just interacting during the day. One of the things you'll notice about the seat, or one of the first things, is these sliding doors. They are locked back uh, for takeoff and landing, but once they're released it gives you this privacy. Now that's not to say that people can't look over, but the thing is that you only really draw the door or close the door when you're lying down. And of course when you're lying down your head's lower and you really do get a sense then of having your own private space. And it's a 79 inch bed, so once you're in here there's a lot of space, you can lay out all of your stuff, you could have your phone charging while you're asleep, either plugged in or just on this wireless charging area. And there's a real opportunity to unwind. And this is an ultra long haul aircraft, so it's going to be Abu Dhabi over to the States, for instance, or down to the Indian subcontinent. So, although there'll be day flights, obviously, it's a real chance to relax, and then when you wake up, you're at your destination. It's a very spacious seat, you've got all the legroom that you would want just for sitting, working, eating. But then, of course, when it comes to the recline, you've got it goes down, so you meet that ottoman under there, and you've got a 79-inch long bed, um, which is plenty of room in terms of length for most people, but also you've got the room to move around in the seat. So for those of us who want to sleep on our back or on our side, there's space to move around without having to wake up to do so. The seat controls are pretty simple, which is just as well, because to be honest, I've seen ones that are complicated and people can't handle them. You can see here, recline, back up again, um, this is the important one for takeoff and landing. The light for the seats, uh, as in the overhead light, take all the power off because you don't want this shining at you when you're um, uh, trying to go to sleep. And then you've got these presets as well. So pretty simple, but just what you need. The important thing with these is to have storage area so that you can put things out, but when it needs to go away, so obviously you've got the noise cancelling headphones. The point for the headphones, this is an independent unit, so you use it to control the IFE, but you can also watch one set of content on here and another set on the touch screen. And then in here you've got a USB and you've got um, power for your laptop. But it's also a storage area. And the same for just here. There's another storage area here for putting, I don't know, passports or phone maybe. Wireless charging as we've mentioned, and there's another, just down here, I don't know if you can see it, there's another storage area here. Down by your legs, there's actually the USB power separately, so you can charge your phone or iPad. And there's another storage here under the armrest, so it can be down, depending on your preference, to make the arm wider, but then you can also lift it up like this, and then when you lift it, under here, there's room for the bottle of water that's provided. Light in the corner, it's a distinctive Etihad touch. It's based on the light that comes through a palm tree. It's also in the Louvre Museum in Abu Dhabi, the design of it, and you can just turn it on and off. So I press that, it's off, back on again. It's more of an atmospheric thing because there are reading lights as well, but it's, it's a nice touch. There's an 18 and a half inch touch screen high definition 4K screen here. We'll pick English. Not the fastest at this time. 
but you can also control it through the um, handheld control and you can actually one th watch one thing on the control and another thing on here. You could do flight path, all the movies, the map, all the normal stuff. There's a table, comes out from underneath the in-flight entertainment, slides out like this, it's got a fold, you could have it like that, you've got the full position and it is a very firm table and there's also two positions it can be in which is kind of important because you might just want it here while you're doing something else and then you can bring it back closer to you if you want to work or have the food by you. Let's see, um, there's a couple of things here. This is the Essential Wellness Kit. It's got a snood in it which kind of goes around your mouth. It's a micro barrier. Um, it's also got which I've already taken out a normal mask. It's got some hand gel and some disinfectant uh, wipes. So that's the kind of COVID side of things, keeping you clean. And now the amenity bag, which has a little message on it saying, on life with old friends, old times and old books, you'll always be prepared for what's next. And then inside, it's a good quality bag. We've got, this'll be the eye mask and socks which is great. We've got toothbrush and toothpaste, which you'd expect. But then the fun bit, we've got some Aqua de Palma body lotion and I imagine some lip sil, yep, lip balm, and then some aftershave. Maybe there's some earplugs somewhere. Maybe, I hope the earplugs are in here to keep things um, nice and quiet during the journey. Of course, it's easy to focus on the seat and forget to mention other parts of the service that are really important. And one of those is the food and drink, admittedly less so on a, on a night flight like this because you'll have eaten in the lounge, most likely, um, and just want to get some sleep. But because this is an aircraft that will be on ultra long haul uh, sectors and some of those during the day, that's when I think the food and the drink and the service that goes with it is really, really important. So let's have a look at the menu. There's a choice of starters, lobster salad, Arabic meze, which is the one that I've gone for, and then a potato and leek soup uh, with black pepper, creme fraiche and truffle oil. The mains are halibut fillet, um, a rack of lamb, chicken tikka masala, or a goat cheese souffle, and this is the goat cheese souffle. That's got an organic superfood salad and red pepper sauce with it. Then you can have cheese and there's a choice of desserts. I was too full for those, but stop. sticky toffee pudding with caramel sauce, eaten mess with a meringue, fresh strawberries and mint, seasonal fresh fruit or ice cream selection of haagen dazs flavours. I don't suppose it would be appropriate um, on a flight like this, but there's an all day menu which is um, it's got things like, for instance, a steak sandwich, chicken and leek pie, toasted crumpets, Scrambled eggs, shows it could be flying at any time. And then um, sort of snacks like ice cream, crisps, baked cookies, madeleines, and Arabic baklava. There's a good choice of drinks. Um, Bellini seems to be the um, cocktail of choice, but then there's champagne, which is Duval Leroy Brut Reserve. Two white wines, a Chardonnay from Stellenbosch, Journey's End, and a Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough, that's two tracks. And the red wine is a Bordeaux Chateau Maro Jalia, don't know that one. Um, it's a Bijou property in Margot, that's Oak Medoc 2016. And um, a wine from Italy, the Veneto, a Passori IGT, which is a blend of Merlot and Corvina grapes. So, good choice. Actually, there's dessert wine as well. Nederberg, the wine master, noble late harvest South Africa, and a 10 year old Tawny Port Grahams uh, from um, Portugal and then aperitifs and spirits. Well, good morning. Um, obviously it's a short flight, it's only about six and a half hours, so the chance to get much sleep um, isn't really there. But I did manage to get a couple of hours. Um, we're just coming into Abu Dhabi now, it's about half past five, we're going to land about half past six. Um, and uh, you know, the, the flight attendants haven't stopped all night. Um, the moment you wake up, they want to know whether you want any breakfast, juices. I'm getting an Americano coffee just now, and my um, colleague across the, the way has ordered a steak sandwich, which takes some doing at half past five in the morning. Um, so I think the thing to emphasize, as well as how good the seat is, is how good the service 
services. It's a totally a la carte service. Um, so the food, the drink, whenever you want it, um, it's served to you. And that makes a big difference because uh, this is a big business class cabin of 44 seats. The fact that they're there all the time wanting to help you um, makes this a, a really, really special business class. But of course there's the seats and the suite and it's um, it's very comfortable, it's very quiet because we're on an A350 and not just any A350 um, but the 1000 which is a big aircraft um, which makes a difference just like it does with a car. And, um, and you've got the technology and the new engines. Um, it's hard to tell how much difference it makes to how tired you are at the end of a flight, um, especially one where we've only had a couple of hours sleep. But um, for the ultra long haul market, which this is going to go on to, say Abu Dhabi over to America, it's really going to be something special. Uh, that's the end of this fly check. As usual, if you've got any comments, please do leave them. Subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Um, and also um, tell us which airlines you want reviewing next. Until next time, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.